Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2, and I'm back again with another movie review. Recently, I went to see August Osage County, and it takes place in Oklahoma, which is nothing but plains. And uh, the story is really quite stupendous. It is probably the most extraordinary movie I've ever seen, and has some very funny moments, if you can call them funny. But it's basically about a very dysfunctional family, and I'm not going to say what the mother's problem is, but she affects everybody else because of her attitude, and then you can see how her children are affected, and her grandchild is affected, and how her husband's behavior affects everybody else, and it's really quite a tragic story, but it's also one of the best movies I've seen in a good long while. It's positively phenomenal. And Meryl Streep as uh, Violet, she's just unreal. She's She just plays that role incredibly well. And um, Julia Roberts, she hasn't been in a, a good movie for a really long time, but this role was, I think this is Julia's best role that she's ever had. And the reason I say that is she plays a character that um, is really fed up and wants to take the reins, so to say. And I'm, I'm not trying to give up too much plot line in accordance to how well written this tale really is and um, just the dynamic between all the different characters and seeing how fractious their lives really are. Um, every character is played to absolute perfection, I do believe, and I was very surprised when I saw Benedict Cumberbatch in this, because he plays a character that's um, an underdog and rather soft-spoken, and, you know, the moment I, I saw him, I, I didn't recognize him right away, but I, I knew who it was, and, you know, I, I had a little flutter in my heart. My my fangirl um, was really happy, um, so I was very pleased to see him in this work of art, and I actually predict that... Um, Julia Roberts and Meryl Streep will receive Oscars this year for Frail because this was absolute um, genius. It truly was. It was brilliant in every sense of the word. And although the subject matter is very difficult to watch, it just shows um, what can happen in a family situation when someone is not quite themselves. And I'm not going to say how this occurs, but it's a slight spoiler. It's, it's not too bad of a spoiler, but everything about this is really grand, and you even get to hear uh, Benedict sing a song, and I thought, oh, you know, my little heart, I thought, oh, I'm so happy. So, you know, that it just made my day. So, um, as far as movies are concerned, August Sausage Country, I think, deserves two thumbs, rollicking up the roof, out out the ceiling, rocking them out, and five stars, hands down, no debating, no disputing, no question. This is probably one of the best films I've seen in a good long while. It's, it's based on a stage play. I've, I've never heard of the writer of this tale in and of itself, and the movie was actually filmed in Oklahoma, and I, I thought that was a nice touch as well because it's so flat, but if, of course it's the plains, but it's, it's very pretty. Needless to say, the, you know, the farmland makes me think of home because we've got a lot of farms here in uh, the heartland, as we're known. Um, so I thought, eh, this is, this is nothing different from what I'm used to, except over here we have rolling hills, and we have a lot of places where the glacial moraine actually stopped, and you can see that in the landscape evidence of that time long past and that's the history of our land and over in Oklahoma the, the moraine there was no moraine it's just you know like a bulldozer went through it it's just flat 
but you know, I'm sorry if you're from Oklahoma. Please don't be angry with me. Your state is beautiful, and you have a lot of good history. And I, I, I love your, I love your accents. You're, you have very cute accents, um, and I like your polite attitudes. I, I really hold that near and dear to my heart and your family values because this is one thing that the film really focuses upon is family values and um, the the sanctity of um, family in and of itself and uh, when family gets out of control I mean there's there's a point in the film where you see what happens when um, everybody else just decides that they've had enough. They've had it up to here, and they just decide that they can't take it anymore. And they're not so resolute as you once thought. But, I mean, in, even in that situation, I don't think that even I could be that resolute. Um, I, I like the the soundtrack and of course hearing uh, Eric Clapton's Lay Down Sally I love Eric Clapton Lay Down Sally yeah it's a really wonderful song but I think the song in and of itself was very um, telling as if you just listen to the lyrics it, it just sums up the the story of the film quite well um, I'm not sure exactly when this movie takes place. I'm, I'm thinking modern day, even though all the characters drive some pretty beaten up jalopies. I mean, they're not really jalopies, but they're old cars that they still drive, and they've got that old fashioned TV, and they're watching People's Court, and it looks like it was maybe reruns, but it's hard to tell. I, I could think maybe it's modern day, but um, it's kind of difficult to say what era this was uh, filmed in. And one of the characters who is um, the new man for another aunt, he's got this Ferrari. Every time I saw that Ferrari, I thought, I want that car. And <laughs> this is my dream car. And oh, Lord have mercy. I, you know, I've had so many fantasies about owning that car like that or or seeing the man of my dreams driving up in a Ferrari and you know hit you right with me baby take you on a trip to see the world and yeah it's, I know it's kind of a strange thing it's, it sounds sort of um, adventurous and risque and maybe a even a little bit foolhardy <laughs> but um, I would love to do that but you know, I wouldn't hop in a Ferrari with a complete stranger. That would be ill-advised. <laughs> but just stupid. But uh, anyway, I need to, every time I saw that car, I thought, "Ooh, baby!" You know, I, I was just uh, having a, a gearhead meltdown, <laughs> or maybe a gearhead orgasm. Who knows? I'm <laughs> uh, awkward. Sorry, but it had to be said. Um. It was a really great film, and I, I absolutely adored it. And it it was uh, sensational. And if we want to see these characters in their different roles and hear Benedict speak perfect uh, American English rather than what my friend across the pond would call proper English uh, <laughs> with accents, uh, but it's it's very appealing and he was probably the most appealing character to me I thought and he was just such a, a gentleman and um, you see the the parallel between his mother and Violet and Ivy uh, and Barbara Ivy and Barbara are sisters that Ivy stays with her mother and um, you've got the aunt who comes over with her husband and She's um, verbally abusive to him, and Violet is abusive to everybody, and she's just a, she's a tyrant, and it's it's really quite intriguing to see this dynamic and the psychological impact that it has on each and every character, and even the teenager of the family, um, Jean, she's 14, but um, it's kind of hinted at that her existence is a little less than what Barbara thought it was going to be, you know, her mother, and um, 
Barbara herself is is going through a uh, separation, but he's with he's with her nonetheless. But it really is quite a magnificent film and a, truly a work of art. <laughs>